Each year, scientists and researchers make incredible discoveries, helping us to better understand the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at these three interesting discoveries. Rugged mountains taller than Everest lurk deep inside the Earth. The subterranean structures, which were revealed by violent earthquakes, provide interesting new hints as to why our planet is a chemical oddity. You may be standing on top of a mountain right now without realizing it. Subterranean mountains, though seeming like a fantasy aspect of Jules Verne's journey to the center of the Earth, are real, but different from any novelist's imagined setting. This bizarre range is part of our planet's stratified structure, rippling down 410 miles along a geologic boundary. It's home to some of the world's most spectacular peaks, including ones that may rise even higher than Mount Everest. Using seismic waves from many large earthquakes, scientists have gotten the best look yet at these underwater mountains. Their findings, which were just published in Science, show that the peaks are not only towering, but also surprisingly rugged. A finding that could shed light on why Earth is a chemical outlier in our solar system. People believe we have made most of the first order findings and that everything else is just adding details to the fundamental discoveries because we have been able to see so much, says Christine Hauser, a global seismologist at the Tokyo Institute of Technology's Earth Life Science Institute. We are still capable of making fundamental discoveries about the interior of our planet, as this study demonstrates. These large earthquakes unearthed some interesting facts, with towering crags emerging from the sides of the subterranean summits. Some areas of the boundary where the deep mountains reside are particularly harsh. While the exact heights of the rough patches are difficult to determine, we believe their presence indicates chemical changes in the mantle. The harshness could serve as a mausoleum for stony slabs that fell from the surface at subduction zones, where one tectonic plate is pushed beneath another. As a slab sinks, parts break loose and continue their descent into the depths. However, it appears that some may become stuck 410 miles down, and the piling up of these slabs may be what causes the hard, rugged border zone. As a result, places where the mantle is not mixing would be identified. Other border regions appear smooth, suggesting that they are mixing much more easily, implying that the mantle includes deep mixing zones and zones that are slower to interweave. Furthermore, the research suggests that Earth's missing elements may be lurking beneath these rough terrains. Some zones of the lower mantle, according to Hauser, may have resisted mixing since Earth's early years, trapping some chemical components in the depths. The problem is, is that it is so difficult to say how long these qualities have existed. Mount Everest grows by nearly a meter to a new height. Nepal and China jointly announced that the world's highest mountain, Mount Everest, is 0.86 meters higher than previously estimated. Until now, the countries had disagreed about whether or not to add a snow cap to the top. The revised elevation is 8,848.86 meters. The mountain was roughly four meters lower than Nepal's previous official measurement of 8,844.43 meters. Everest is located on the border between China and Nepal, and mountaineers from both countries attempt to climb it. Officials from Nepal's foreign ministry and survey department said surveyors from both nations worked together to reach an agreement on the new height. During Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit to Kathmandu, Nepal's capital, last year, they agreed to jointly reveal the new measurement of the Earth's highest point. Mount Everest had previously been measured to its rock height by Chinese authorities, but Nepalese authorities contended that the snow on the peak should be included. After measuring the peak in 2005, the Chinese surveyors computed their figures. In 2012, Nepalese government officials informed the reporters that they were being pressured by China to accept the Chinese height, so they decided to take new measurement to put the record right once and for all. The Survey of India confirmed the 8,848-metre height 
Nepal had been using for Mount Everest in 1954. But the country has now undertaken its measurement of the top for the first time. Mountain heights are calculated using the mean sea level as a reference point, so it is less about figuring out where the top is and more about figuring out where the bottom is. Nepal used the Bay of Bengal as its sea level, but India had already surveyed a site closer to Everest from the bay, near the India-Nepal border, and could supply the height at that point to the Nepalese surveyors. Nepal then constructed a network of line-of-sight stations reaching roughly 250 kilometers to the point where Everest first became visible, forming a chain of points it could measure and put together. According to the state-run China Daily, the Chinese surveyors selected the Yellow Sea in Shandong's eastern region as their sea level basis. The height of the peak was also calculated using trigonometric formulas by surveyors on both sides. They employed formulas to calculate a triangle's height by multiplying its base by its angles. Despite all of the meticulous preparation, someone must remain on top of the mountain. After Nepal paused all expeditions during the coronavirus pandemic and China barred foreign travelers, Nepalese surveyors reached the summit last year, while the Chinese surveyors were the only team to reach the summit in 2020. To reach a more precise figure, Nepalese officials stated they calculated trigonometry using 12 distinct lower peaks looking up at the Everest summit. Chinese surveyors allegedly employed the same strategy, according to Chinese media. Mount Everest has been measured twice before by China, the first in 1975 and the second in 2005. According to the Himalayan database, members of the second survey team planted a Chinese version of a GPS gadget on the summit. Chinese surveyors this time employed China's Beidou navigation satellite system, which is thought to be a competitor to the US-owned Global Positioning System, or GPS. Snow depth, weather and wind speed will also be tracked using the technology to aid glacier monitoring and ecological protection, according to China's national news agency, Xinhua. Surveyors in Nepal utilized GPS to make their calculations. Mr. Dakar told the reporter, we analyzed this data using the internationally recognized technique to establish the height of Mount Everest. In the future, the Earth will have just one continent. The solid crust we walk on, the Earth's outer layer, is made up of broken pieces, similar to the shell of a broken egg. The tectonic plates, which make up these pieces, move around the planet at a few centimeters per year. They occasionally come together and form a supercontinent, which lasts for a few hundred million years before disintegrating. The plates then disperse or scatter and move apart from one another finally coming back together after another 400 to 600 million years. Pangaea, the last supercontinent, arose around 310 million years ago and began to disintegrate around 180 million years ago. According to some estimates, the next supercontinent will form in 200 to 250 million years, putting us about halfway through the current supercontinent cycle's scattered phase. The question is, how and why will the next supercontinent emerge? Nova Pangaea, Pangaea Ultima, Orica, and Amasia are the four main scenarios for the birth of the next supercontinent. The way each form is determined by various scenarios, but they are all tied to Pangaea's split and how the world's continents are still moving today. Pangaea's disintegration resulted in the birth of the Atlantic Ocean, which is continually expanding and widening today. As a result, the Pacific Ocean is closing in on itself and becoming thinner. A ring of subduction zones, the Ring of Fire, runs along the Pacific's margins, where the ocean bottom is dragged down or subducted under continental plates and into the Earth's interior. The old ocean floor is recycled there and can be used to create volcanic plumes. The Atlantic, on the other hand, has a massive ocean ridge that produces new ocean plates but only two subduction zones the Caribbean Lesser Antilles Arc and the Scotia Arc between South America and Antarctica. Investigating the Earth's tectonic future pushes us to think about the processes that change our planet over long time scales and to push the frontiers of our understanding.
But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.